when pursuing spirituality as a means to evade religion, furthermore, when you denounce religion and you affirm yourself within spirituality, please understand that there are limitations, there are restrictions, there are boundaries, and even moreover, there is an aspect of conformity that is consistent within spirituality as you too may find within religion. Not to suggest that you should not um, announce your stance affirmatively within spirituality. Not to suggest that you should not be a spiritual person because I'm a spiritual person who respects religion. I can see the value within the Muslim practice. I can see the value within the Jewish faith and or belief. I can see the value within Christianity. I can see the value within, you know, the practices of the Jehovah Witnesses. I can see the value in Scientology, you know what I mean? Like I can see everyone's perspective and still respect my stance within spirituality. Nonetheless, even as a spiritual person, I do have my own boundaries or at least my preferences. I'm not a practitioner of voodoo. I'm not a practitioner of hoodoo. But, you know, I have my respects for each, you know, aspect of religion and or spirituality. So I say all this to say, you know, at times people have this perception that, you know, within spirituality although it is a bit more liberal than I would say religion there too is an aspect of conservation there is again boundaries limitations restrictions that come along with being you know a religious being although spirituality may lack the harsh enforcement and or reinforcement of respectability politics there is a code of conduct there is an etiquette there is a correct as well as an incorrect way of doing something and or saying something. Take, for example, sage. Scientists have observed that sage can clear up to 94% of airborne bacteria in a space and disinfect the air. When sage is burned, it releases negative ions, which is linked to putting people in a positive mood. So moreover, When you assess the practice of hoodoo, it is well understood as to why white sage or sage alone is intricate to its practice. And moreover, when we are discussing white sage, it is important that I mention that it is also significant to the Native American people. So moreover, you know, I wanted to have this discussion of sage because at times people just think, oh, let me just pick up a wand of sage, especially white sage, and remove this negative energy. And as it's often discussed, I can't say that it is confirmed. It has been suggested that utilizing white sage can rid your house of positive energy as well. So it is important for you to utilize, or rather most suggested for you to utilize Palo Santos to reinforce your intentions of ridding your house of negative energy and welcoming positive energy, welcoming abundance, welcoming prosperity. But if you don't do the research and if you don't look into the uh, properties of what you're utilizing, you may never know. So really, I just wanted to assert my viewpoint to furthermore reinforce just being knowledgeable of whatever it is that you're pursuing. When you're pursuing spirituality, although it may be an evasion for some, although it may be um, a personal pursuit of wellness, spiritual wellness, you know, it's always important to be well read in whatever you are devoting yourself to. For example... When I'm provided with a definitive that I'm seeking to further define, I will break it down. I will condense it until I find an actual word within it to further define the word itself. I will break it down from the prefix to the root and so on and so forth until I gain a better understanding of the word. And furthermore, I gain a better understanding of the words that make it the word that it is. You know what I mean? Like, for example, spirituality, one of the main focal points of that Definitive is spirit, which is a word in a word. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense. So with spirituality, there's a focus on the spirit. So why would I be focused on the tangible aspects of life when I need to be focused on the intangible aspect of myself? You know, of course, there is an awareness of the body because that is a physical reflection of the spirit. But moreover, there should be a focus on the spirit itself when you're uh, dwelling within spirituality because spirituality the focal word that you can assort through that you can clearly see is spirit and as demonstrated politically as well as religiously 
You too may find people within the spiritual practice that develop a codependency at which they almost require an authoritative figure. They need someone to dictate their spiritual progression. Or you may find a spiritualist that relies heavily upon accessories and or tools such as gems and stones and crystals. So for example, there's this one individual that I encountered in high school and she was discussing how she felt so vulnerable without a particular crystal. And you know, you do further research and you understand that there are other crystals that possess the properties that she is seeking to protect her when she leaves the house so that one crystal really wouldn't make a difference but nonetheless it's just like even there you see people don't really do a lot of research into various properties like there may be one stone that's actually better than the other for you based on you know your birthday hell you know so getting to the point what I'm trying to say is like it doesn't matter how many crystals you have. It doesn't matter how big your crystal is. It doesn't matter how big of an amethyst I carry with me. If I don't do the work to develop the knowledge to acquire the wisdom that I'm seeking, the amethyst, the amethyst is not going to be the supplement. It's not going to be the compensation for what it is that I lack. Same for, you know, something like rose quartz. I, don't, I could have the biggest rose quartz, as many rose quartz as I want, the rose quartz from Madagascar, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, if I don't do the work within myself to love myself, I will not in turn receive the love that I'm hoping to acquire in the world and from another person. So, again, this also kind of leads to the discussion of manifestation. Manifestation is merely the acknowledgement of energy. Manifestation is a part of metaphysics and metaphysics is a philosophy at which I often condense as being the intersection of science and spirituality. So sometimes people forget how scientific, you know, spirituality can be or how scientific metaphysics really is or how scientific, you know, manifestation truly is. It's the acknowledgement of of energy. When you're telling someone to set their intention, you're acknowledging your energy may be positive and or negative. You're acknowledging that energy and furthermore affirming it through the reinforcement of various theories, such as the laws of attraction. You know what I mean? Such as the theory of energy being neither created nor destroyed. So at times we get so caught up in the material aspect, the tangible amassments of, you know, uh, capital, social prominency we get so caught up in that and not realizing that that's a byproduct of the actual result which is the metamorphosis of the spirit because spirituality is a focus on the spirit so when your manifestation is resulting in a fruitful uh harvest a lot of it has to do with you know the spiritual work that you put in more than it's just like the desire that you set forth you're really getting what you deserve you apply the momentum and you see a movement it's not necessarily like just setting your attention and saying, okay, it's set, leave it alone, not think about it. No, it's literally attracting what it is that you want. So hopefully this makes sense, but it's just like, there's just certain things that people don't really break down further to where someone could understand that, oh, manifestation really isn't a desired based activity as it is really getting what you deserve. If you don't put in the work and you just simply set the intention, like, yeah, I want to, I want to get a job. No, that's that's not how it works. I can't just keep on saying, I want to get a job. I want to get a job. I want to get a job. And maybe I can. I honestly can keep saying that. But what's really going to change my circumstances when I get up and get off my ass and start putting in applications, when I start, you know, going to jobs fairs, when I start, you know, fine-tuning my resume, when I start actively being a part of my intention, that's manifestation. It's not just saying, oh, I want it. Let me put it in a jar. This is my manifestation jar. No. That's not manifestation. It's literally the laws of attraction. It's literally like science as it is spiritual when you get into metaphysics and you start, you know, discussing manifestation in such a a way. So all in all, it's not really to critique anyone's, you know, spiritual. Well, it is. I'm not even gonna lie. It is to critique, you know, one spiritual practice. I even do it for myself. Like, I'm not going to stagnate myself and just identifying as polo pescatarian, at least for the progress that I'm seeking to make. I really want to rid myself of any energetic blockage. And I do understand in consuming food, especially food that is dying at the hands of uh, production, you know, for my personal consumption, may it be free range or not, you know, that's something that I want to cut out because I'm consuming 
someone else's nervous system. I'm consuming someone else's trauma, maybe a shrimp, maybe a free range chicken. You know, I'm still consuming someone that died for the sake of my consumption. So I'm actively working towards becoming vegetarian and later becoming vegan, vegan, because again, I don't want to be a part of the animal byproduct of production or the byproduct of animal production. Yeah. However I said it, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't want to be a part of that. And I'm actively, you know, seeking to no longer, you know, be a part of that. But then again, you know, for me to get to this point, it also took a bit of spiritual insight. It took a bit of acknowledgement and research to just develop the sense like, yeah, I am consuming somebody else's stress. And I'm talking about me being stressed, you know? So it's just like simple research that I just hope other people draw to, you know? Even with like Amethyst, these are tools. These are accessories. They're not like the sole source of your spiritual progression. It's just a part of it. Or like, and this is going to be my last point of reference, but I also kind of want to address the lusty, haughty, explicit, lewd aspect of my generation, the generation, the generation, look, the generation X and or Y. I don't know what we are, Z, P, elemental P. Listen, so I know there are some individuals, especially women, when we are discussing sex magic, and that is what we are going to discuss very briefly. I'm not going to touch on it to where, you know, people get uncomfortable, but to a degree, it incorporates a sense of alchemy and just how to repurpose your energy and furthermore define it in a tense that allows you to have power over it. It really transforms the acts of sex from being a, de- a desire-based activity and more so being of purpose and true intention as you are, again, setting your intentions just as you would with manifestation because to a degree, sexual magic is manifestation. So, you know, I wanted to touch on that as well because you got a lot of people talking about how they're going to be sleeping with many men, many, many, many men during the summer of 2021. And I'm not even coming for anyone's... uh sexual expression or that's not my intent you know if you are sexually expressive however you are if you regardless of your sexual orientation that really is none of my business but when you start discussing like sexual magic there again is like a decorum there is a way to do it and a way not to do it And as written within a Teen Vogue article given an interview conducted with bourgeois artist and botanical owner Taylor Cordova who says about sex magic through sacred sex we find a particularly 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 ripe portal for making our wildest dreams come true and drawing our heart's desire into our energetic field this allows us to be at harmony with the world and ourself using our inner strength and power to shift the universe allowing us to use mystical forces from within to attain our hopes so even when i make that specification of many men many 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 men it's not even to assert crude judgment to women who pursue sex in the way that they have when addressing sexual magic but moreover sexual magic is quite intricate and or sacred to women because it allows this intuitiveness to our divine feminine and to briefly reference an aspect of science and this is just me pulling from the archive of my memory if I do recall correctly humans are the only mammals if not a part of the marginalized specimen group of you know species that have sex for the pure intent of desire or it often you know we have sex with the choice of desire rather than the mindset of procreation and the sustainability of an ecosystem society our community like moreover when we have sex it's just because we have this sensation to do such rather than you know I'm having sex because I actually want to start a family and I actually want to have a child out of this so overall I reference humanity or rather place a significancy on our desired based participancy within sex as I too reference Taylor Cordova as I too reference alchemy because overall when partaking in sexual magic there is a mindfulness may there be the lack thereof that is uh pointed out as a significancy or may it be the encouragement of mindfulness and you know just being present within the act there is a discussion of mindfulness so you know I say all this to say as I referenced or mentioned previously 
you're discussing having sex with many men, many, many, many men to open the portals to wherever you're trying to go within this, you know, participancy in sex magic. That's not how it works. You have to really be mindful with whom you're choosing and when you choose to have sex. Hell, when I was researching it, they're talking about charger your vibrators under the moonlight, under a full moon. Look, you can't do it under a crescent moon, allegedly. I'm just playing. But you know what I mean? Like, there's just certain etiquette and or decorum that comes along with spirituality just the same as you would with religion. So if you're using spirituality as a means to partake in whatever you could not partake in or whatever was shunned within religion not to suggest that you're going to be shunned within spirituality but definitely know like there is there is a there is a code of conduct depending on you know what you hold yourself to if you hold yourself to sexual magic there is a conduct to that if you hold yourself to hoodoo there is a conduct to that if you hold yourself to voodoo there there is a conduct to that now for me you know being a spiritual person that doesn't hold myself to much of anything when I start to partake in aspects that are of a conduct you know if I start to partake in sexual magic you know what I mean if I start to partake in hoodoo voodoo etc etc then I have to Understand that there is a set of decorum. There is a set of, you know, what you should do and what you should not do. Although the judgment may not be as harsh as you often find within religion, although it very well can be, you know, there still is just boundaries and restrictions and limitations, as I mentioned previously.